In the Dial Plan Overview module, we introduce the concept of a Dial Plan context as a container for extensions. Now we'll discuss context in more detail and show a few examples in sample extensions.com files we've created just for this module. For reference, these files are available in the Attachments tab of this presentation. Dial Plan contexts are extensions.com's version of sections. Like distinct sections in any other asterisk configuration file, they are signified by being wrapped in square brackets. In Asterisk 1.8, there are few rules enforced on context names. However, we recommend you only use letters, numbers, and the dash and underscore characters in context names. We recommend against using whitespace and special characters because these can make your dial plan much harder to troubleshoot and test. In the first example file, you can see that we've listed phones, internal, and from outside as good context names, and several other examples of context names we don't recommend because they've included special characters or white space, or they're unpronounceable or not descriptive. Remember that context names are labels that can be used to make things simpler and more manageable for the asterisk administrator. In extensions.conf, comments work just like in other asterisk configuration files. A semicolon indicates that the rest of the line should be ignored by asterisk, so you can add a note on the same line as the context declaration, or have a line starting with the semicolon right before or right after the context declaration. Asterisk configuration files also support block commenting, where a comment begins after the semicolon dash dash token and continues until the dash dash semicolon token. This commenting style continues through line breaks, so you can easily comment large blocks of configuration. Commenting the context name itself will cause asterisk to ignore the context definition, but not its contents. Be very careful when doing this. The only way asterisk knows when one context ends and another begins is by the declaration of a new context. So, if you comment that declaration, all the extensions within the commented context are now considered to be part of the previously listed context. This is often not the behavior you want, so you should be very careful when commenting contexts. It is usually a better bet to comment just the extensions that you don't want loaded, and to leave the context uncommented. It doesn't hurt anything to have a context declared that has no extensions in it. Block commenting a context name and all of its extensions is another way to troubleshoot the dial plan without inadvertently putting extensions into an undesired context. That covers most of the syntax you'll need to know to use context effectively. Let's look now at how contexts are used. At a basic level, they are a tool to separate groups of extensions. Internally, Asterisk considers context as part of the basic extension addressing when determining how to route a call. When we say 500 at demo, that means extension 500 in the demo context. By the way, this is a test extension in the default extensions.conf that dials back to Digium's PBX using the EECS protocol and plays an introductory message if the call succeeds. Saying extension 500 is incomplete in the asterisk dial plan sense because every extension only exists as part of a context. Extension 500 in the demo context is different than extension 500 in, say, the default context. Contexts are a way to keep groups of extensions separate from each other. It's valid and somewhat common to have the same extension number exist in more than one context on the same system. They're logically separated by being in different contexts, so there is no overlap. Asterisk also provides a way for contexts to relate to each other via the use of includes. Adding an include directive in one context tells it that if it doesn't have a match for the dialed extension, it can look in the included context to see if there's a match. Examples and a deeper look at how includes work are offered in the intermediate dial plan chapter. Other common uses for context in the dial plan are to separate different IVRs or to collect all the extensions of a certain type together. Extensions that transfer a call into a queue might be put in a context called queues, while extensions for call services, such as checking voicemail or joining a conference bridge, might live in a context called services. A simple example is shown here. Contexts play a crucial role in securing your asterisk system from unauthorized calling and toll fraud. Poorly designed dial plans can make it possible for callers from the outside to access internal extensions. In some cases, you might want this. It may be handy for an employee to dial into the system to check their voicemail, but in many cases, this is not the behavior you want. You don't want an anonymous caller to be able to dial back out through your PBX using two trunk lines and potentially running up expensive toll charges. We'll continue to keep security in mind as we introduce more and more dial plan configuration, 
and will call out several best practices along the way. A module in the Intermediate Dial Plan chapter addresses the issue of call access control in greater depth. To recap, contexts are the top level container within the asterisk dial plan, and extensions live inside contexts. Contexts are section headings within extensions.conf, so they're enclosed by square brackets. A complete dial plan address in asterisk uses the extension at context format. Contexts are generally used to separate classes of access or to make other logical separations between groups of extensions. Contexts can relate to each other via the use of includes, where the extensions contained within a context are made accessible to the context specifying the include. Next, we'll look more closely at extensions in the asterisk dial plan.